then I was just wondering, oh, it's interesting that they said that, but I guess in the in the apocalypse, it kind of makes sense if you think about it. Twisted Metal is a blast from the video game past. Twisted Metal is dystopian. Twisted Metal is a whack-tastic, crazy ride. Whack-tastic and ride in the same description. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Falling Towers. Watch the first podcast, the podcast in which we watch the first episode of a series so that you don't have to. But you still can. Hell yeah. Uh, today, you may have guessed, we are doing Twisted Metal on Peacock. First episode entitled... W-L-U-D-R-V, probably a license plate. Uh, please make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, give us a five-star rating if you're listening in and a nice review. We'd really appreciate it. Look, everybody, actor Rico E. Anderson is here. Hey, thanks so much for having me. This is my first time on the show, and I'm really on it. Thanks for having maybe, me. Maybe 21st. Yeah. Hey, Somewhere. all the way from Duke university that is through the stars and star trek and universe all the way to here is dr muhammad noor hello always a pleasure to be on falling towers watch the first of things and not just duke university also also berkeley this guy yeah one guy semester was of telling us, that was it. he's telling <laughs> us of his bedlam in berkeley uh my name is ryan t husk i've been to berkeley too the town, <laughs> not the school. Uh, <laughs> all right, so let's get into this, everybody. It is Sci Fi Month. We're finishing up Sci Fi Month, and this was under the category of Sci Fi. It's dystopian science fiction, uh, also comedic, I believe. So, uh, if you have any suggestions for the month of March, drop those in. I think we're doing children's cartoon spinoff. Muhammad, is that what we're doing? Mm. It was like long drama series. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which one is it? Either it's one. Not long drama. I'm just making Ryan's chain. <laughs> in the comments below, make your suggestions of long drama series or children's cartoon spin-offs like DuckTales, which we've done before, things like that. Um, but right now we're doing sci-fi month and we're gonna have so much fun. Make your suggestions below, by the way, typing WTF, the show, and parenthetically where we can view it. Like for this one, you would have said WTF, Twisted Metal on Peacock. All right. Where do we go, Muhammad? Long, let's get into this. Sorry. If it was long drama, you could do uh, Netflix uh, Designated Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> but up next, we have predicaments where we each predict Ooh. what each other thought of the show without giving away whether we liked it ourselves amazing it's ryan's favorite part of the show it is it really is i mean Until this we get is drama it. month and not so much <laughs> this is it you got to start with your favorite stuff eat dessert first look rico and i have known each other for 124 months already uh right 10 years and four months so since October Man. of 2013, everybody. So we know wow. each other inside and out, if you know what I'm telling you here. Ooh, Dr. Wow. Muhammad Noor, <laughs> like our feelings and stuff. Okay. Dr. Muhammad Noor and I have known each other for a few years pretty well. We do this show off and we're pretty good at guessing, I think. We're pretty good at guessing. Uh, Rico and Muhammad you know each other okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make some predictions. Muhammad, I predict... You're going to be tepid on this show. You're going to say there were some things that kind of made you laugh. There were some things that were kind of cool and kind of okay. But overall, you're going to be like, it's just not for me. Like, even if it were for me, it wasn't that great. But it's not for me. And it's not that great. So I'm going to say you're going to be <laughs> right around the four or five. That's where you're going to, you know. Yeah. Rico... I think you're going to be pretty high on this. I think you're going to be right around the seven and a half or eight range. You're wow. going to enjoy some of the comedy. You're going to think there were some good moments. I think all around you're like, this, this is a good show overall. 
I predict Ryan. I think I think you're going to be a little bit warmer than how you described. You think I would be <laughs> on those. I think I don't think you loved it, but I think you're like you know I like world building. There was some world building here, so I think you're going to be maybe in the six range. Rico, I'm going to and be a little bit more moderate. Than Ryan said seven and a half to eight. I'm going to say maybe around the seven for you. I think you would. I think you liked it. I think you like some of the characters and things like that, but. I think there are some aspects where you're like, this could have been, this was a little chaotic. I think maybe it could have been a little better in this way. <laughs> so pass Ooh. the baton to you, Rika. All right. All right. I'm not offended by that. Um, let's see. Uh, Dr. Noor, I, um, I'm going to say that I, I think you, you enjoyed it. I, I'm going to say that I feel like you, you enjoyed the ride that was, that, see what I did there? That was, uh, that we all took in the first episode. And um, I, I feel like you may feel like there could have been a little bit more, but I don't think you hate it. Mm -hmm. um, Ryan, I think you are going to be a little bit more harder on it, but I feel like you still enjoyed it for the, um, for all the basic stuff that it was giving in terms of action and, uh, the, the building of the story and stuff like that. I don't think you hated it, but I think you, um, I think you, yeah, there you go. That's mm -hmm. This is a toughie, everybody. We're kind of all over the map here. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody, it's time to make your predictions. Do you think I liked this show? Do you think Muhammad did? Do you think Rico did? Make your guesses go as wild as you want. Split the difference on ours. We, you got some hints. Who knows how helpful they were. Type away in the live chat or in the comments below what you think we thought of this show. Take your time. No rush. While you are typing, whether you are one of those quick typers, those fancy schmancy people that took like typing classes or whatever it was, uh, or if you're like, as our friend Peter Karuba says, hunt and peck. Typer. Oh, is he that one of those typer, ty typists? Apparently. Uh, if you're one of those, it's okay. Take your time. Muhammad's going to buy us a little bit of time by telling us what the show is even a boot. I will do my best. In the dystopian future, cities have walled themselves off and left, quote unquote, bad guys outside. However, John Doe and others serve as, quote, milkmen, delivering goods between cities amidst chaotic shoot 'em up fights. John Doe is invited in by the deceptive COO of San Francisco and offered a dream come true, a home within the city, if he drives 2,100 miles to Chicago and brings back a package within 10 days. John decides to give it a shot, always in one. Outside the cities, a brother and sister are making their way with small thefts, but they get caught and the brother dies. The sister gets away, but then tries to carjack John Doe while he's on his mission. During their standoff, a crazy clown-masked guy from Las Vegas approaches, and they decide that maybe he's the greater threat. Very good. Here but go. was he, though? Don't find out the first. <laughs> All right. Uh, a... What? We'll talk about it later. All right. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. All right, everybody. Somebody may have seen the second. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm not saying I have. I'm not saying I have. <laughs> well, now's my favorite part of the show. Is that what you're about to ask, Ryan? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> this is one we like to call Expect Kitchen. We spend a little bit of time on what you expected before you actually saw the show. And a lot more time will you actually get in right as you watch the show. Oh, I'm sorry, Rico. Or as Ryan no, no, says, no, no, I'm, I'm taking boxing, so I'm 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 able to. Oh, you're much better than I am. I'm sure. <laughs> tax, man. I'm. I'm, uh, I'm yeah. Sick. Ryan says it differently. Ryan says it as we like to compare and contrast what we expected before watching the show with what we actually got after mm -hmm. having watched the show. So again, not giving away what we thought in that first part. You guys know what Rico's favorite Canadian holiday is, right? Boxing yes. Day. All right, so my point is, yes, let's just do that. Forget that happened. Uh, forget it kind of didn't happen, actually. So, uh, Muhammad, before you watched this first episode of Twisted Metal, what did you expect, if anything? Never heard of it before. <laughs> Never heard of it at all. 
I think you mentioned it was based on a video game, or somebody mentioned it was based on a video game. So I was like, okay, I guess it had to do with cars. <laughs> you know, it says that in there. And I knew the guy from Falcon was in it because you know he's there in the in the image when you pull it up there on Netflix. So I was like, I guess it's something that involves cars crashing into each other or something like that that has Falcon in it. So that was about it. Hmm. What about you, Rico? What did you expect before watching this first episode, if anything? So before watching it, I expected what is pretty much put in front of us with pictures and just, you know, just the basic, hey, here's our show. We want you to watch the type of advertisement. Um, you know, they're hitting us with, you know, a little bit of a Mad Max type of, of vibe. And, and uh, one would assume like a... Um, a fast and furious type of uh, uh, just uh, experience and whatnot. So I expected those things. I expected, I expected that that setup, that level of action, and um, yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Had you heard of the video game? Yes. Never okay. seen it. Never seen anyone play it. Never saw like any type of like you know clips or anything from it. Got I've it. Heard of it. Okay. Well, I'll tell all y'all what I expected. So I had heard of the game Twisted Metal, oh. and I liked it very much. I liked it very much. In fact, I'm celebrating by wearing a '90s shirt. System of a Down, late '90s. System of a Down, favorite band check that out so yes i like this game very much i'm not much of a gamer now in fact not at all because they're very time consuming but when i did play video games as a child i would get addicted to sports games i would play entire football seasons or entire basketball seasons i was terrible or baseball seasons or hockey or fighting games i would just fight 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 this was the only game that I can ever remember playing that wasn't any of those, but it's kind of a combination and I loved it and it was so freaking fun and it was amazing. So when we had this suggested, I was like, whoa, I'd never even known this was a real thing. But what I expected was like, maybe I didn't know it was a real thing because it's not very good. Mm. It wasn't, I didn't see any advertisements. Nobody was like, dude, bro, have you seen Twisted Metal? Oh, so good. So I kind of expected it to probably maybe not be good, but would still have like the cool vehicles and stuff that I remember about the game. But that's what we expected. Oh, here come the notes. Pencils down, everybody. No more guesses. Dr. Nor is going to tell us, but he actually got. First, I have one other thing unexpected to. I mentioned to my administrative assistant, Janae, that we were going to uh, watch the show Twisted Metal. I said it was based on the game. She's like, what? There's a show based on it? Because she played the game. So she was a little shocked there was a show based on it. <laughs> so, nice. Interesting. She didn't know if she played the game and everything. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, again, it lends, it lends to Ryan's point. Um, I'll say it was better than I feared because I went in a little skeptical. <laughs> I thought, like, <laughs> this might suck. <laughs> but it was better than I feared. <laughs> um, I'll start with the positives. I mean, I did think the world building to it was interesting. I didn't know this world at all. I didn't know what it was going to be like. Uh, that that was interesting to see. I mean, it was fairly typical dystopia, but still there were some specifics there which were a little bit different. Um, there was some, you know, the plot was okay. There were some minor twists that I thought were a little bit interesting here and there. We can talk about those uh, uh, later on. It was. I thought it was good that we didn't know the motives of all the people right off the bat. Interesting. Basically, it, it lends a little bit of aid. Instead of just laying everything out, oh, this is a good guy, this is a bad guy, he's trying to do this, she's trying to do that. It was a little bit more complex in a way that I thought was really good and it added for a little bit more build. And, you know, there were definitely some moments that were quite fun. <laughs> there were definitely a couple of lines like, oh my God, that was good. <laughs> some of that was delivery, like especially the, the guy. What is the name of the actor who plays Falcon? Anthony Mack? Uh, Anthony Mackey. Anthony, Anthony Mackey. Mackey, yeah. His delivery, spot on. Yeah, no, I thought he was great. Yeah. Um, on the negative side, it was way, way more violent than I like. I was like, oh, <laughs> I, I didn't like that aspect to it, too. I, I'm, I'm not big on boss, and Ryan knows I don't like horror and stuff like that. So I'm like, didn't like that aspect. Um, 
Also, although I mentioned there were some minor plot twists, it was still, at least for this first episode, a lot of it was fairly predictable. Like, oh, she's obviously misleading him. Oh, he's he's definitely going to do this. Oh, you know, so it was a little predictable. So that those those brought it down a notch. But overall, you know, I did not regret watching it. It was good. It was like it was good, just in the good mm. realm. So, Another uh-oh. reference to the '90s: the band Corn sings a song, "Predictable." Huh? Everybody knows uh, Rico E. Anderson. What did I you mean, actually get? I liked corn. I liked corn. Um, you know what I got was I got I got I got the apocalyptic uh, feel and the setup, and of course the the Mad Max vibe. Um, very violent. I agree with with Muhammad, especially like oh my god. One of the things that just kind of really set in was when dude jumped on top of the car and then the gun comes out and you know where the gun's pointed <laughs> i was just like whoo that is not a way you want to go no matter what your gender so it was just like there was that um but overall i got i got a great setup right i thought i thought uh coming out the box they 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 let you know you know, they 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 grabbed me from the start. Um, uh, I I got uh, some cool humor. You know, it it, it was it, the the comic the, the the comic timing I thought was was fun. It was uh, it it it's great to see a black lead in something like this. Um, having that um, and and just and just seeing diversity in something that has historically been either all white or all white all male or just all dominating on one particular genre so it was nice to see a plethora of people from um black male leads um latina leads i believe uh, the woman from brooklyn 99 who's in the picture there mm-hmm. um so her of course never it was Neff Campbell, right? Who was? Uh, I thought so. Yeah, uh, it's always cool to see Neff Campbell. You know what I mean? So you know she's she's a she's a she's a '90s darling, '90s favorite. You not recognize her? That's funny. Yeah. I did. I was yeah. like, whoa! It's uh, whatever that movie was with her and Denise Richards, Wild Things. Oh, oh. I was party! I was thinking Party of Five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, no, so so got got a plethora of all these things, and and um. You know, got a got a nice little setup, which um, was which was cool because obviously it's easy to just set stuff up and just blow stuff up and and not have any type of um, anything to follow in a way where that's going to keep your interest. And obviously, there's a story here, and we got that, or we got we got the beginnings of it. So um, we got a lead into what's to come. So, well, to your point, uh, the guy that plays Sweet Tooth, the clown guy, is a wrestler named Samoa Joe, who is yeah. Samoan. <laughs> Samoa Joe is Samoan. Uh, okay, I'll tell all y'all what I actually got. Um, overall, it was pretty good. Better than I feared, as Muhammad said. Uh, although I think he may have feared it was worse than I did. And his better than he feared may have also been worse than my better than I feared. Um, the, the major disappointment is that, for me, is that the vehicles were not featured more. Because yeah. it's based mm. on a video game that is doesn't include vehicles or feature vehicles, it's all vehicles. It's like there's a Transformers cartoon or video game, and they come out with a movie, and the Transformers are on the screen 5% of the time, and the rest of the time is people talking. You'd be like, <laughs> you'd be like, okay, the maybe the plot's good, but I'm watching this for the fucking Transformers, bro. I'm watching this show for the fucking weird ass vehicles with 
that's what made it so cool was that each vehicle was super unique. So they were faster or slower based on what they were. They had different weapons and different styles, and you can pick either one of them. They were very different, and they all had a plethora of weapons that were unique to that specific vehicle, and there were like a dozen of them. So I really think they should have featured the vehicles a lot more, given us a five or six minute, you know, vehicle race and battle and, you know, stuff. There was a tiny bit in there, but not a souped up vehicle against a 57 Chevy, a souped up vehicle against another souped up vehicle or against two others. And they're shooting missiles and blowing stuff up. And that would have been great. Yeah. Yeah. So overall, the show was pretty good overall, uh, but it was a disappointment in that it wasn't about the vehicles. But let's just get up into this thing, you guys. Let's talk about this. Muhammad, you got your notepad ready. What did you let's let's not go to the nitpicks just yet. Mm-mm. What did you like? The funny parts, for sure. Like, I had, a, I have multiple funny scenes throughout there. Like, for example, the very beginning where, where he was driving through the mall. I was like, oh, they have a footlocker. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> that was. was. I definitely like that. <laughs> um, let me see what else do I have. I and there was more in that mall, too. When he's, he's like, this place is a maze. And he's stopping and looking at the map. And we're like, we've all been there. <laughs> we're like, this place <laughs> no, like... is a maze. By the way, just to pause you there, Rico, sure. did you no. recognize that mall? Because it must have been shot here in LA. I thought I recognized it. Oh, I and I could be wrong. I mean, you've been on more sets than I have, but it was. It looked like I don't remember what the mall is called, but it's kind of Southwest LA, maybe around like Westgate or you know that that area. And there's a mall that's closed down, and so they use it for you know. I think we shot. I, I was on it for Gone Girl, if you remember Gone Girl. Mm, um, yeah. And I think I've seen another thing. So I, I think I recognized it, but I could be wrong. So everybody in the comments below, let us know. When you watch Twisted Metal, what mall, what broken down mall is that? I think it was that one. I, anyway. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it's something that easy access. And it's just yeah. like, why wouldn't you shoot there? Yeah. I really did like Stranger Things and stuff like that, too. One of the yeah. later seasons where they had the big mall scene. I thought so when I watched it, but then I don't. I don't think it was. Mm-hmm. Maybe we have a bunch of broken down malls in, in LA. I don't know. Or maybe yeah, a lot they of things are set. shutting down. Yeah. yeah, a lot of a lot of businesses are closing up there. Yeah, brick and mortar. So. Anyway, so more uh, funny moments, uh, Muhammad. Yes, uh, like when he was talking to the COO, and and she said, "You can have anything you want." He's like, two ply uh, TP," and she's like, "I can do better." He's like. Three plot. <laughs> that was epic. Um, the police guy, what was his name? Agent Stone. When um, when when he was when uh, he stopped the brother and sister, and, and <laughs> the brother explained what a sister was, and he's like, "I know what a sister is." <laughs> I thought that was good. He didn't know though. I don't think he cared, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, those, those were the, those were the big three. I had a couple of little ones too, like the, the long parallel parking scene and things like that. that but some of those were kind of funny too, but those were the biggest ones. But yeah, that, that for me, given it wasn't that long an episode too, that there were some like solid, solidly funny things. Like, okay, that was good. I'll give it that. Speaking of the parallel parking, I was noticing that this show had a lot of nods to the 90s, right? Parallel parking reminded me of Mike Myers in uh, Austin Powers. And then I realized, I wonder if that's not just that it reminds me of that. I wonder if that's deliberate because they were, they had Nev Campbell bringing her back. You know, they're playing songs from the nineties. What was the the first song? I already forgot what the the first song was, but it was a nineties song. And then they had the super champagne supernova by Oasis, another nineties song. So, Oh, Cypress Hill. When did the game come out? The 90s game or is it? It was mid, yeah, it was mid or late 90s, I think. It was. So anyway, so I thought that that parallel parking thing, I was like, you know what? It might not just remind me of them. It might be an actual nod Mm -hmm. to it because it's a very 90s nod kind of show, I think. Rico, did you have funny moments you loved? Me? I am a funny moment. 
I don't know if I just insulted myself, but here we are. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I think everything that Mohammed pointed out, um, I, I love the whole situation with the mall. Um, again, the comic timing to me was, was so great, you know, just with, with the whole, you know, again, going to, ooh, they got a footlocker. And then I actually love, it was so cheesy nowadays, but you, you can't help but love a classic as I'm driving through, I'm grabbing the shoes as I go type of moment. He didn't know if that was a size nine or 10 or whatever. He <laughs> he got them shoes coming out. He got them shoes. So that was cool to see. It's probably um, a 13. I actually was hoping that we'd see more of the mall in terms of there's a foot locker and all of a sudden he ends up near a, near a orange TV juice toys or a, yeah. i don't know there was a mrs fields too which was kind of fun <laughs> a what oh yeah mrs field cook yeah yeah i don't know just something quick and for whatever reason there's still stuff there i mean probably don't want cookies to still be there but you know to see a pair of like jordans you know you just grab those so uh that loved love the parallel parking um moment that was definitely a nice uh throwback um, it, it was cool seeing, uh, just a lot of the people who were a part of this Thomas Hayden church, you know, who's done a lot of stuff, you know, he, he played, he was the sheriff, um, of course older now, but still Thomas Hayden church. So. Yeah. Cool. yeah Thomas right, Hayden church. Wasn't he in like wings or something? What was he in? I think he was in wings and he was also Sandman in Spider-Man. Oh mm. yeah. Right. Cool. He was Sandman. Uh, so and he's done a ton of stuff. Oh, he was also in um, the one with Paul Giamatti um, um, about the wine. Um, oh, great movie! And yeah, uh, what is that called? It's like a, it's like two syllables, like sidekick or something like that. It's something like that. People in the comments, what is it? Um, and they they talk yeah. about Pinot Noir, about right? Wine. Say it again. Pinot Noir. They talk about. Yeah, it, it was about wine tasting and, and just the art of it and all this kind of stuff. And he ended up being an alcoholic. Sideways. I was close. What was it? Sideways? Sideways. What did you call it? Side Sidekick. Sidekick. <laughs> close. That yeah. Was the I never saw the movie. But anyway. Well, let me give you guys a little bit more backstory on this video game. Please. Basically, it's kind of like if you've ever played one of those fighting games like street fighter or anything like that mm -hmm. you you pick your character and then each character kind of has like their home you know like blanca was in brazil brazil and then you know if e, e honda would be japan things like that mm -hmm. so they all had i believe their own kind of cities and the city itself was like the arena to fight in so if you were in like vegas for example you're driving through Vegas and you're battling and shooting each other. And, you know, it's kind of like if there's the ice cream man and you're the car, his car was one of the things you could be. The ice cream man was one of the things Then you guys are driving through the streets and trying to kill each other. And you've got these different weapons and different obstacles, you know, and I think the L.A. one was that you're in the L.A. River, you know, so you're just riding around here, you know, it's kind of like an arena. So. I am, and I think there are 12 or 15 cars. I imagine what this series is going to be is this guy going from city to city and fighting them in their arena, just like the game is. But it, it was just not nearly enough of that. It was just all talk. And I get they have to create a story, but like you got to also make this show be what makes it unique. And what makes the show unique was that the vehicles are the characters. They're they're really interesting. They have all these special things. You can make each driver of the of the thing unique, kind of like what they're doing with this guy, the the ice cream man. So that's kind of how the game goes. And I was hoping there would be a lot more of that. But but I, I do feel though. like there there was a nice a decent setup in the sense that they mentioned. Uh, like when, when Nev Campbell was like, well, you got to go pick up this package. Oh, by the way, did I tell you that the package was in Chicago? Dun, dun, dun. So we got that already. And then 
the mention of Vegas was another one. So I, I feel like they, they did set it up in a way where they know that if you're going to watch more episodes, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to see why it's not cool to go here. And, oh yeah, for sure. You know, for sure. But then if you think about that first 10 or 15 minutes, pretty much unnecessary. We didn't true, need to true. see, we didn't need to see him running into her and her brother. In fact, when he did that, we knew that lady was going to end up being his love totally. interest because there was like that totally. pause. And I'm like, okay, we get it. She, you could have started the show at him arriving at San Francisco, just yeah. a routine drop off. Oh, uh, I'm a drop off. And then you kind of figure it out along the way. And then you can see the full battle with him and the ice cream truck in the first episode and whatever. Anyway, doesn't matter. I see. I was about to say, the, if you did that, you would have lost the battle in the beginning. Basically, you would say, move it so you get the battle at the end. Then. Yeah, or just some battles, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but there more. were a lot of funny moments for me. Like when they sprayed his anus with the perfume, that was funny. That was funny. Uh, the parallel parking, hosing him off with the green juice was funny. Um, there was a lot of, there, there were a lot of moments that made me laugh. Uh, yeah. Never made it past Barstow. I don't know why that was funny. Barstow is just kind of like a legendary town around here because it's like the midway point to Las Vegas. And we all stop at Barstow for a burrito and a pee-pee or something like that, you know? Um, or when he said, perfect place for an ambush. And he's like, yep, I knew it. And then it wasn't. It's like, okay. Another thing that what uh the sister and brother were driving that purple hearse that's also one of the car characters you can be so oh. i was like i was like dude is that all we're gonna get like that whole entire character one of the 12 main characters in the game you see it for a second and it's over so my guess and hope is that the brother is going to rise from the dead and be a ghost and drive the purple hearse again because i'm like that the purple hearse needs to be a main. They can't just be a little tiny footnote in the first episode where you don't even see the hearse shooting guns or shoot or doing its special thing. There's got to be. It's got to come back, and that's my prediction: is that he will be a ghost or a spirit or something like that, and he's going to be. And the purple hearse will be driven by a ghost, and he's going to fire weapons because otherwise, well, that's they'll... terrible. Well, maybe they'll do flashback scenes or something. Oh, maybe that's, that's true. Possible. That's a good point. That's true. Did you guys know? I mean, I figured, of course, that the COO lady was was you know on again, but I didn't guess that like the the husband and kid were not there. No, were not hers. That was like, oh, <laughs> especially this like he's going to be some sort of prisoner guy. See, mm -hmm. honestly, I I thought I felt like something was up, but I didn't think that she was totally playing him. I I and and I agree with you about the son, the the, the kid and, and the and the husband, but. I I wasn't I I don't know. There was a part of me that thought, hey, this could be some legit shit, but some just don't seem right. And considering the world we're in, everything's suspect. So, yeah. you know, but he fell for it. Seemed he good. did, you know. and that was good. And that that really worked for me. Yeah, that yeah, you know same. that wasn't what you would expect in this no. hard world. You would expect all the money you could ever want, an island, uh, this or that, you know, that that would be fit the character you would think. But in reality, the character is just like, oh, a normal life, happiness, kids, family, you know, jello. You know, that that was that work. I thought that was very good. That was funny. I, you know, I, I one of my questions was, what was that meat that they were eating? So that was one thing. That was a big uh, ass sausage. <laughs> I yeah, sure. I okay. Um, I told you, a Foot Locker got just, a thirteen. Uh huh. Right. Nothing. I, and then I was just wondering. Oh, it's interesting that they said that. But I guess in the in the apocalypse, it kind of makes sense if you think about it. But they were just like, yeah. So all they just let all the criminals go, and they just let all the criminals just do whatever they do outside of some of the, I guess, sanctuary cities, if you want to call them that, like New San Francisco, which was like a utopia. It's also important to realize that she was not called the mayor of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. She was the COO. That is a very good detail because that means it's run like a business. It's owned, yeah. it's controlled, it's run like a business, not Maybe they there's no mayor. Muhammad 
We I never heard of, what the we never heard what the package was, did we? No. No. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I wonder if it's, I wonder if it's a person. Mm. I did think about that too, but that's one of those things where you probably won't find out until like episode six or something. Yeah, like that's what I too. Or may or or worse, episode ten, and it's like to be continued. Oh my god. <laughs> Is there anything in the video game that, that hints at a, at a package or anything like that? Or is that something new? Maybe maybe that's the storyline behind the video game. But really, the video game is just about fighting. There's no more story than that. You know what I mean? It's just pick your car. And, you know, I think you can you can do one on one where each person picks their car and their location or their vehicle and their location. Or you could be one car and then you're going through the gauntlet, going through the story, you know, and then you go all the way to like uh, Taiwan or something like that, you know, Dang. and you're going through tubes and it's really a lot of fun. Anyway, so maybe that's season two. Muhammad, I begged you to start with the good stuff. Do you want to hit us with the bad stuff? Yeah, I think actually I already said with the bad. I mean, there wasn't anything terrible for it. I mean, for me, really, I didn't enjoy the violence. Like it was, it was so like graphic fun? which i know some people oh. some people like that yeah some people might find it fun <laughs> for me that was that was not a sell and like i said there were a lot of things where i'm like well she's obviously lying well he's obviously going to do this well he's going to do this despite this person telling him not to do it i mean there were so many things where I'm like okay i see where this is going that that you know it kind of limited the enjoyment from it um i actually thought the performances were good i thought the the graphics were good i actually didn't have much negative about the actual execution there to me i thought you know for what it was it was pretty good i don't know did you guys have something more negative or nitpicks rico i i don't know why but for some reason the whole thing this whole thing with the brother just offing himself was weird to me mm -hmm. that that was just like really huh and were they really brother and sister and if they were <laughs> what, why would he just take himself out like that? I don't know. And maybe if I do watch the second, it, that'll be explained. I don't know. And again, we we could get him back in flashbacks and Brian, you get your car and life as we know it would be great. But why, why did you find it surprising? Episode, I, it's just what, look, why did he, why did he take himself? I mean, I understand apocalypse, you, you know, uh, <laughs> death and despair, yeah. lose all hope you know, and all that, but it was just kind of weird because... Well, the Asian said he, like, that that he had to do it or else. Like, basically, like, one of them had to die or else. So, I mean, that's why he was kind of, like, protecting her. It wasn't just he did it out I, of depression. I mean, he did it to protect her. I guess, but I guess, I, I don't know. They, may, maybe the action person in me is kind of like, hey, man, fight fight till you can't fight no more. Fight to the death. Uh, you gonna kill me or her? We gonna kill all of y'all until you kill all of us. <laughs> then just go and just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. I got another prediction. Thanks. When I saw that scene, I was like, she's gonna save that bullet forever. Mm -hmm. And she's gonna divulge to that guy at some point. I'm this bullet I'm saving for the cop. Yeah, that so, like there's so, no yeah. way that at yeah. some point she's not going to yeah. say this bullet is for Agent Stoner, you know, yeah. and she's going to get him. And if it happens, she should do like a a typical '90s uh, Schwarzenegger or Stallone type of line when she says it, like "You've been terminated," yeah. <laughs> or, or you know, uh, "The fight is over." I, I don't know something. I just that. She'll be like, police to meet you. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I believe the police car was one of the vehicles you could be too, oh. by the way. So that's going to be like, got to be a character they're going to keep forever. Were, um, were they flipped out or were they just basic police cars? In the I think it had, I think one of its special weapons was like a laser taser thing. It was, you know, okay. She would like zap everything. So maybe we'll yeah, see that. I mean, sense. I'm just like, dude, you guys make the show about what made the movie cool or the 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 yeah. game cool. It's these cool, souped up, crazy vehicles that are in no way realistic, but super fun to watch what they can do. Like this and guy. The, we'll get more of that, but you're saying you wanted to see that in the first of those. I mean, I just feel like 
Yeah, dude. That's it's what the game's about. That should be what the the show's about. At least some. I feel like it should have been. It should. The formula should be seventy five percent this stuff and twenty five percent cars battling each other with their super cool weapons through streets and whatever's like that, and not five percent, ninety five percent. Anyway, look, I think we should move forward to things that are not about battles. What do you say, Muhammad? Sounds good to me. <laughs> So Rico, stuff we'll see. <laughs> maybe. Hey, hey, yo. Rico E. Anderson, actor. Let's talk about you for a moment, if you would. Can you please tell us what's new with you? So, um, as of this recording and uh, probably airing, uh, there's a new show out called Extended Family. It stars uh, John Cryer from Two and a Half Men and uh, Donald Faison from Scrubs. Scrubs. And I can't remember the woman's name, and I apologize because she was so cool, so sweet. Um, but she's from Timeless, and she's done a ton of stuff. And um, it's a comedy. And it has a very two-and-a-half-men type of uh, comedic style to it in terms of just a lot of back and forth. And uh, I'm in the fifth episode, and it's actually oh. to air as of, well, it's going to air on Tuesday as of this recording. Um, so by the time this recording, this this episode comes out of Watch the First, it would have already aired. But it's going to be on NBC. And uh, yeah, I guest star in the fifth episode. So I'm I'm excited about that. Um, we actually shot that episode before before um, the strike and everything. And so it was just a matter of waiting until the strike is over so they could continue to shoot the season and promote it and all the stuff. So that's happening. So I'm excited for that. New Abigail Spencer. Yeah. Abigail Spencer. There you go. That that show keeps showing up in my Facebook reels all the time of like, you know, you would like this show. So I, I've, I've seen the little clips. It does look fun. You you will like the show. And I'm not just saying that because I'm on it. It's actually a very funny show. And what was, what's cool about it is, you know, you got the comic timing of both like um, um, uh, John Cryer and, and, and Donald Fraser. You know, so it's like you you have the, their, their timing and, and just their style. And John Cryer is just delivering just like Alan from, you know, just, I mean, you know, he's brilliant in that. His comic timing is, is, is excellent. And he, you know, he, he was fun to where I, I did, I did an episode of two and a half then. And mm -hmm. it was cool revisiting, having, you know, having to work with him again and, and stuff like that. He's, he's, he's a consummate professional and just, just, you know, really cool dude and uh, fun to work with. And um, it was a fun show. So, you know, one of the coolest things. Family. Yeah. Huh? Extended family. You know what one of the coolest things is about when people are looking up an actor is when they see him in something and they see her in something and they look him up on IMDb and they go, whoa, he was in a ton of stuff. Oh, he was. In, oh, I didn't know he was in the, oh, the you know, like yeah. that. And I got to say, Rico, you're you're getting to be one of those guys, right, where you're really piling on the cool and fun and impressive credits. Do you ever look back on your IMDb and go, damn, that's pretty cool. Like, you know, just kind of bask in it for a yeah. second. Allow yourself to take a break and enjoy it. No, I do. I do. I, I feel like as, as actors, because of just the wackiness of this business, um, good and bad, um, it's important to really, you know, take the moment to smell the roses and to really um, feel good about what you have accomplished. And, and what's to come you know and and i do feel that way I, I feel like my career is more i'm that guy who was in that thing um but what's great about being an actor and ryan you know this is like all it takes is like one big thing that will define either you forever or will put you into that next uh stratosphere in terms of um uh, your career, because maybe you were on NCIS and you were on Two Broke Girls and Two and a Half Men and SWAT and all that, but now you're on da da da, and everybody knows you from that, and you become this household name and stuff like that. So it's all, always cool to have that, you know, to be a to. It's a cool part of the journey, but it's definitely cool when you do stop and just kind of look back and, you know, see where you've been. It's fun. It's, it's fun. It's frustrating at times. It's it, it can be soul crushing at times, but 
there can be so many wonderful examples of how great this business can be, um, especially if you just stick with it and, and just really continue to put your all into it, which is what I'm proud to say I've, I've done and I continue to do. So, you know, yep. yeah, Ryan, you and I have had that conversation about the kiddie pool. You know, wanting yep. to get out of the kiddie pool and just wanting to grow as as an actor and to and to do more and to be seen as more and to be uh, respected more as an actor and and to really be and to up my game and to next level myself and and I still work towards that hardcore, that, but I feel very good about where I am and what I have accomplished, the people I've worked with, and um, that's outside of Star Trek. I mean, just in so many different genres. I have a huge fan base in the um, the true crime uh, genre of the industry. You know? Oh, I didn't know you were the subject of a true crime show. <laughs> oh, well, oh, I, I see what you mean. Personally, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question about the kiddie pool. You mentioned the kiddie pool earlier. What What is the show that you had the shortest yet speaking role in? The shortest? Yeah, like where you had like one line, but you did speak. It wasn't just like a background thing. Well, what's crazy was I I was on the show Mike and Molly, um, which uh, came out a little over 10 years ago. It was, I think mm-hmm. it was on CBS. Mm-hmm. And I played the mother's boyfriend. And it, it <laughs> I played her boyfriend, but I was just a voice. So I'm upstairs and I'm literally saying, baby, come back to bed. That's my line. And what was cool about it in one aspect, well, I mean, you always want to be in front of the camera, but what was cool about that was that was a week on set while, you know, because when you do a multicam comedy, it's like at least three to five days of putting it all together, rehearsal and uh, uh, um, shooting certain scenes before the audience comes in and then the audience comes in and all that. I had one line. I'm not on camera. I'm literally upstairs on the sets shouting out, Baby, come back to bed. Did not need to go into hair, makeup, none of that. They just had to mic me, and that was it. That was it. That was it. I wanted to be on camera, but hey. (laughs) You should have jumped in anyway. Well, uh, where can people find you online, by the way, Rico E. Anderson? Hey, go to Instagram and go to I am Rico Anderson. And you've got to put in I am Rico Anderson because if you don't, there's a rapper named Rico Anderson, but it's not me. Oh, so, is he good? I am Rico Anderson on Instagram. I am Rico Anderson on Twitter and Rico Anderson on Facebook. And my website, RicoAnderson.com. Easy and fun. All right, everybody. Dr. Noor thinks we're going to do the bottom line right now, but really, we're going to do a pivot and do the terrible twos. Bottom line. Go twos. Bottom line. <laughs> also, everybody, check this out. I think I found the characters from the original video game. Oh. You see. Ah. So there was oh, Pit man, Viper, Fury Crimson Fury, you know, all these guys all the way. Oh, see, here's the cop. Uh-huh. And I think the main character was modeled after this car. I think. I'm not sure. Mm, okay. But it is different. It's still very different. And you see the the cop and there's Sweet Tooth. See the yeah. the, the clown car. Oh, yeah. I was thinking you were talking about the deer guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So a lot of weird things going on there. Anyway, final two questions of the show. Question number one is. Dr. Muhammad Noor, on a scale of 1 to 10, be honest, what would you give this first episode of Twisted Metal entitled something that looked like a license plate? I think on, on all the titles looked like they were license plate titles. Mm-hmm. And so this title was WLUDRV. Uh, maybe it says, maybe it's We Let You Drive, maybe. Maybe. I wrote W U L, but I may have written it down wrong. <laughs> um, overall, like like I said, it was better than I feared. Especially when I when I heard it was a video game, I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> this could this could end up being pretty bad. But better than I feared, but way more violent than I would have wanted. So my on balance score, which I have written down here, is a six point eight. Hmm. Solid, you know. Yeah, not too bad. Not as bad as Rico or I thought you were going to give it. Because Rico even went, hmm, meaning like, hey, that's better than I thought. 
What about you, Rico? Scale of one to ten. Scale of one to ten, I'm going to give it a. I give it about a eight point five. Wow. Yeah, I I I enjoyed it. I'm interested in in in. I'm interested in what they offered uh, to us, and um, yeah, yeah, you know, they they caught my attention with the humor, the action, um, the setup, and um, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. always room for improvement, and who knows? Maybe that improvement somewhere. might happen in the next few episodes, right? Exactly. Let's see. All right, I'll tell y'all what I would give it. Um, I actually kind of vacillated on this quite a bit. Um, Not not by a ton, but I was kind of warring with myself because the bottom line is, I'm like, hey, if I had not played the video game and didn't know anything about it, would this show have been that great to me? Probably not. I probably would have just been like, okay, it's just a show about you know, a guy going to pick up a package. Okay, it's kind of cool. It's kind of okay. But the excitement for me was was seeing the ice cream man and seeing the the cars. And that's what was exciting to me. But they did build a world pretty easily. It was funny. They The show is not a world beater show. It's not going to just wow the world. But they make it clear to the audience they're not trying to do that. So they're not like trying to and failing. They're saying, no, this isn't one of those shows. This is going to be a fun show. We're going to blow stuff up. We're going to be graphic. We're going to say dirty jokes. We're going to laugh. There's going to be some nostalgia. Let's have some fun. Um, And so I I did have fun. And I give it a 7.1. Oh, we're very close. (laughs) We are. I was originally going to give it like a 7.6 or 8. But then I was like, wait. And then I started being like objective about it and going down to a six. And I was like, all right, you get Ryan, you just got to record. You got to come up with an answer. And so 7.1, I kind of just split the difference on it. But that's question number one. Question number two is upon us. And it is for the purposes of this podcast, we all had to watch the first episode of Twisted Metal. But now that the podcast is over and we're free to move about the internet, Dr. Muhammad Noor, would you of your own volition Watch the second episode. Yeah, I guess so. So I'll call it a yes. <laughs> like, it's kind of barely. Like, realistically, I won't. <laughs> but would I? Like, I just completely exhausted everything else and it was on, and somebody said, no, 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 it's really good. Like, I guess so. Um, like, <laughs> all right. Yeah. I know, right, Rico? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Rico? Um, yeah, I would watch the second. I I I feel like the the setups were there. It, it's gauged my interest, and I want to see I want to see what's up. I want to see um, I want to see more of that adventure. I want to see Anthony Mackie getting up these cities, and now that he has the sidekick, uh, you know what? what How is that relationship going to be? And and you know what's Nev Campbell really up to? What's what's Ooh. really going on in that situation? And um, hey, will he find more Nikes? Who knows? <laughs> Maybe watch the second to find out. Um, so yeah, I'm on board. I'm on board. Do you think awesome. we'll see Nev Campbell in the second episode, or do you think we won't see her until it basically he's all the way back? And will and we? I don't know. I think she's going to be at the very end and provide the twist that leads us into the second season. Yeah, that sounds presumably. Right. That's my guess. Maybe. Um, Rico, did you call the other lady? Did you call her the sidekick? Yeah, it probably wasn't okay. the best choice of words. I just um, want to make sure you said kick. What what do you think I said? Side chick. Um, <laughs> well, not sidekick, just partner. No, right? shit. Know, partner, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. I mean, for the purposes of this show, they're gonna be like, that's the main character, so she's probably the yeah. sidekick. But yeah. Um I mean, I- Right, depending on whose point of view we're talking about. <laughs> In her mind, he's probably her sidekick. Right. right, uh, right. All right. That would actually so, be a funny back and forth. We'd be like, no, and I'm it might be. Sidekick. It might be. She's definitely a hardened character. She's not going to be a weeping willow. She's not going to be anything like that. So it's going to yeah, be a it, really good relationship. 
and 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 cool casting on that because um she she had, just in general she has a she has a she just has a cool demeanor about her and that that shows also on Brooklyn Nine Nine just just like her just her whole demeanor and Rosa. stuff so it, it's, it's yeah. hmm. be interesting. all right well you guys I'm going to clear out all the drama and just say it's a yes it's a pretty easy yes Woo. for me wow. um like I could go as low as I wanted with the numbers. But with the yes or no, which is really the real question, that's really the one. No, no production cares what you would rate it. They only care if you would click on it and watch more of it. That's all they really care about. And so in the in the grand scheme of things, it's a yes from me. And uh, I, I do worry that it's one of those shows where if I did watch two or three or four episodes, and it continued with this 95% talky talky and only 5% what I'm watching this for. Then after about three or four episodes, I might say, okay, never mind, and move on with my life. We'll see. Don't know if I will watch the second, but if I do, hopefully we'll get more of that. Great job, Peacock Original, for making Twisted Metal. It's three yeses from us. Who knew? I we thought for sure you were gonna say no, Mohammed. I already wrote <laughs> in no for you. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was almost sure there, it. though, with the violence, though. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, if it was for the violence, actually, I'd be all in. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. All right. Good job, everybody. Uh, all right. So, everybody, make your suggestions. If you'd like us to review a show and get a surprise twist from Muhammad in the comments below, suggest that show. Surprise Twisted Metal, I should have said. Thanks, Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, we will review the show that you suggest. Maybe. <laughs> That's it for us. Special thanks to Rico E. Anderson. Special thanks to everybody watching. We really appreciate all of y'all. We know there are a lot of podcasts out there, and we appreciate you choosing us. I feel like that's something people say. Do we, though? Oh, wait, no, we do. Okay. What I'm trying to say is this podcast was sick and metal. This podcast was less violent than the show. <laughs> it was <laughs> this podcast was definitely a ride of an apocalyptic ride uh-huh <laughs> so like that that was violent right there that was <laughs> I all right mine. <laughs> thanks everybody for hanging out with us please remember what mr michael Kenyon rosenberg always likes to say Likes to say, don't forget to be an organ donor. That's the more important one. But then almost as important is don't forget to watch the first of things. All right, everybody. Uh, freeze frame like the clown when he's about to eat a hot dog. Smile.